I have them for a couple of years and I like it. I've been meaning to, but maker has so many avenues, um, so many mediums to play with. It's hard to play with them all and keep up with them all. Um, but a Twitter friend, Rob Morrow has been uh, sharing out some coding on the Circle Playground Express that he and his kids have done. Um, this is the Circle Playground Express from Adafruit. I have one of these. Um, it's a neat little thing. It's got lots of pins. It's got some LEDs on it. It can do music. Um, you know, sounds got buttons. I like it. it. It's got a lot of things. I also have a micro bit, and micro bit's got a nice little features too. Microbit's a little bit less expensive than Circle Playground, but Circle Playground's got the colored LEDs plus sound, so it's always a playoff. Um, I he also Rob was also playing with this LED strip, this NeoPixel strip that already has alligator clips attached to it. Not that that's a big deal, but if you don't have alligator clips, I've been wanting to play with this strip just to see what it's like. Um, so I got one of those too, and then I had to get started. So I went to uh, makecode.adafruit.com slash projects and, you know, scrolled through and looked at some of them and came up with a wearable NeoPixel one because I was going to play with NeoPixels because I had to figure out how to get it started because you have to initialize um, the strip and tell that it, so you, you got a, an external set of LEDs on it. So I looked this and this told me how to, to get it started. I knew I had to do a variable. It's always a matter of, it's a syntax of how to get it started. So, um, why are we lo still loading blocks? Now, there's a lot of things I like about make code. Um, and then the microbit one does the same thing. On the left here, you're going to see pop up, hopefully soon, um, an emulator. It shows you what the uh, Circuit Player Express is doing as you program it. The microbit one does the same thing also. And then with the blocks, it also shows you the JavaScript, the the other the, the, the text code that it's creating for this. So um, hopefully the emulator will pop up here. Um, if not, there we go. Um, so that's really nice. So again, first thing I had to do was create a variable. So you come down to the variable box, um, which is usually blank until you make a variable. Then it populates it with these three things. So I just called it strip. Could have called it NeoPixels, LEDs, alpha, beta, anything you want, it doesn't matter. And then I had to come up to the light and NeoPixel set and find this idea of you know, setting strip. Because you have to tell what pin you're on, you're plugging into for the data pins. Obviously, the other two pins, one's going to be ground and one's going to be voltage out. Um, I'm going to tell it was three, 30 neopixels. I think the Circle Playground could do uh, 60 neopixels. I'm not sure exactly from just a, a basic battery before you have to power the neopixels externally themselves. Um, there's a limit to how many neopixels you can power through a microcontroller. So that's what I started with. You, you got to on start. Just tell we got a uh, set of NeoPixels. Then I used a forever loop. And again, here are the loops. You can do whatever you want. But I could have put it in another on start. Um, uh, repeat. Uh, we could have done uh, input. You know, when you press a button, do something. When you shake it, do something. There's all sorts of ways to get this going. I just want to make it do some things. So the first thing I did was just to show the regular animation. It's got some various animations that it'll show on the CPX um, and the time. It's got some defaults. You can change that to a certain extent. And I said, hey, let's show the let's show that same animation on the strip. Okay. And do have four seconds. Then I just okay. Then after four seconds, let's change all the pixels to red, do that for two seconds, change all the pixels to green. I'm just playing with that. Now these colors here is only 16 colors. That's boring. Um, then I was saying, well, it's Christmas time. Let's do silver and gold. So that meant I had to Google what's a color code for silver and gold. And then I had to find in the lights this idea of a color code, RGB, red, green, blue color code, that instead of a 
color red, I can put in a code. So then you, then you got to Google like HTML codes or RGB codes for whatever color you want. And they'll come up. And for example, gold is 212, 175, and 55 is what something told me. I said, okay, sounds good. Um, so I did something like that in there. Now where I put that, and this was kind of boring, is I, I didn't want to – type in let's talk about these functions so i did that i was just doing single colors now i want to do um different colors on different pins there's 30 there's 30 leds here we could do each one a different color well i don't want to i don't want to put blocks in here to set you know pixel one you know set set pixel Set pixel color at zero to red. Set pixel color at one to red. Set pixel color at three to green. Set pi I don't want to do that and put that in here because that'd make this code really long. So what you do is you create a function. Um, it's like this little subroutine, and this function is called red green. Again, it's like a variable. Name it anything you want. So here's my. I have a function silver and gold. I have a function red green. Um, and in this, set pixel color at 0 to 255, zero, zero, which is, as my comment here says, I had to learn how to make comments, too. It was funny. I just right-clicked on something, and all of a sudden, comment came up. It's like, oh, that's how you make comments. Because I want people to, you know, I want to remember, you know, people to know this is the color red. Some people might not realize that. And then down here, we were doing green. Um, unfortunately, I do have to put in, you know, 30, um, pixels because there's 30 pixels. I'm going to change the colors on. Why is that green way over there? All right. And then I also do the same thing for silver and gold. I created a function called silver, silver and gold. I said at zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, four, uh, you know, up to, th up to, uh, 20, 28. This is my, what color is this? Oh, this is gold. And then down, um, Neo Pixels 1, 3, 5, you know, all the odds. This is the color for silver. So stuff I just Googled. And then how you make those functions happen is you just call them. So it kind of makes this look a little neater without having to have all 30 Neo Pixels underneath here. I can have them off to the side here, and then I can just tweak whatever I want here, and it changes automatically here, which is which is pretty good. Um, I threw a purple in there just to be in between, like, hey, we're doing red and green, and then I like purple, and then we change over to gold, um, silver and gold. Um, now, my gold light function was kind of stupid and boring, but I was just learning it because I, I set all the pixels to gold. Um, I could have done that with set all pixels to gold. I didn't have to create a whole function for it. But again, functions are nice things to start learning how to do. Um, so that's what I created. Um, here's the JavaScript for it. It's 89 lines long, I think. Um, so you can see the Java and uh, start learning about the text coding also, which is a nice thing to do if it actually ever switches over to the Java. Da, 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 da. Um, so that's more to do with it. I could have added sounds. I mean, you look over in the drop down menus about all the things you can do and all the inputs, what way you can do things. And um, the, the CPX has some sensors. It's got volume sensors and temperature sensors um, and light sensors in it, too. Uh, so, and it's not going to switch over to JavaScript. I don't know why it's so slow. Da, da, da. Well, maybe it will. Um, so now Rob has created a maker course for the CPX. It's at makecode.com slash blog slash Adafruit dash circuit dash playground dash express slash maker course. Um, Google maker course for, for Adafruit CPX. So now Adafruit also has this little cricket, which I've just bought one of those recently. Because um, it's like uh, an interface, so you don't have to solder things. 
to all these pins here. The pins. This is the Circle Player on Express hooked up to the uh, Cricket. So Cricket's just the interface. Um, trying to make it a little bit easier. Like here's where I could have plugged in NeoPixels with just the wires, not with alligator clips. And it's got screws to you know tighten everything out, so you don't have to solder anything. Um, so that's a nice little device I'm going to like play with. And they've got one for the micro bit also. So, um, again, rabbit hole, because you just start looking, how can I do this? How can I do that? What do I do? How do I make that easier? How do I do that? Um, and that's the fun. Well, let's refresh here, see if it gets. Otherwise, I'll just stop. And you can look at JavaScript when you make one. We'll give it 30 more seconds, right? Um, oh, and then how you get it on your CPX is you download it. So down at the bottom here is going to be a button for download. Um, and the Circle Playground Express, you have to press the reset button, which is a little, little tiny button. And um, that means, and have your thing, have your device plugged into the, your computer, and then the CPX is going to act like a flash drive, and you drag and drop the program onto it, and then it starts running. So, all right, it's having trouble loading today. So, those are the ideas. Talk to you later.